Okay, let us start. Uh, in 1988, after cooperating artistically as the Kwikuwek duo for 17 years, the Polish artists Przemysław Kwiek and Zofia Kulik split and began their respective solo careers. Today, over three decades later, their joint work from the period of state socialism is counted among iconic examples of the 1970s and 1980s East Central European neo-avant-garde. In my short presentation, I will sketch an afterlife of Kwikulik's art as produced through the medium of collective exhibitions between 1989 and 2006. I will be asking how the identity, artistic position, and historical meanings of the artist's works were being transformed, re-established, and rewritten in this period by what I'm tempted to call multimodal performatives of these exhibitions. That is, by different ways, the shows re-employed, re-contextualized, and reinterpreted the displayed artifacts. There are two parts uh, uh, to my text, and the first one is called Post-Socialist Polishness. The uh, historization of uh, Kwiekulik's oeuvre began immediately after the duo had split. At the turn of the 1980s and 1990s, the selected works were shown at two exhibitions in Warsaw. Paul German Russian in 1989 at the former Norblin factory building, and Polish Schick in 1991 at the Zachenta Gallery. Both events were organized and sponsored by Andrzej Bonarski, a businessman and art impresario who had already made his name as a promoter of Polish neo-expressionist painting. In the case of these two uh, shows, as well as a few others, he cooperated with Maryla Sitkowska, an art historian and a custodian at the National Museum in Warsaw. Both exhibitions were meant as thematic presentations which commented on the issue of Polishness from, on, uh, from an already post-socialist perspective. Paul German Russian addressed Poland's geopolitical entanglement in relations with its two neighboring countries, Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union, while Polish Schick strove to tackle the Polish otherness, its uh, specific cultural and existential identity. Both uh, shows featured not only neo-expressionist works, but also selected pieces by, by artists representing the 1970s neo-avant-garde. This choice and juxtaposition went against the grain. At that time, it was not uncommon uh, among Polish art historians and critics associated with the political opposition to delegitimize, in political and moral terms, Polish modernist and neo-avant-garde art produced between 1956 and 1980 as turning a blind eye to the realities of the communist regime. Um, the um, his art historians and critics in question, they would contrast to this period um, the uh, 1980s new expression in, uh, movement as the first artistic generation which explicitly addressed these socialist realities in an engaged and critical way. Uh, while Sitkowska generally shared the view on the post to uh, artistic modernity in, po modernity in Poland as seeking refuge from the reality of an actually existing socialism, she nevertheless wanted to prove that certain late 1960s and 1970s uh, neo-avant-garde artists, including Kwiekulik, contested the political and administrative regime, opposed it, or looked for alternatives to it. Putting them uh, side by side with neo-expressionist pieces was, therefore, already a revisionist gesture. An exhibition performative meant to defend these neo-avant-garde artists, uh, legitimize them, or even produce the effect of their anteriority and exemplarity as critical respondents to the regime. In the case of Paul German Russian, Kwikulik's work Mayer's Encyclopedia of 1977 was included together with a number of other works by representatives of the 1970s uh, neo-avant-garde from Warsaw. The duo's piece originally consisted in cutting images from a multi-volume German encyclopedia and mounting them to the wall of the artist's flat. 
According to Kwiekulik's self-narrative, the idea was to present a topic from a repertoire of the state official anti-Nazi, anti-war, and anti-German propaganda by means of new experimental art practices. In the exhibition space of Paul German Russian, the task of recontextualization and reinterpretation of Kwiekulik's work was performed by relations with neighboring pieces, which could endow it with certain new meanings. One of them was Grzegorz Kowalski's uh, Lenin of 1969, which also treated an official socialist motive in an unconventional way and produced highly ambivalent effect. The multiplied heads of Lenin could symbolize germination and dissemination of his revolutionary ideas, but also evoke some, something evil, like Hydra heads growing back. Placed next to Kwiekulik's encyclopedia, it might have suggested that the latter produced equally ambivalent meanings. Another work was Paweł Kowal Kowalski, Kowalski, sorry, Kowalski's uh, 1935, a painting installation with Polish political leader Józef Piłsudski, shown between Adolf Hitler and Joseph Stalin. This piece might have retroactively inscribed uh, Kwiekulik's and Kowalski's ambivalent takes on Polish-German and Polish-Russian relations in the conceptual frame of the two uh, totalitarian regimes, which had already been on its way to becoming the dominant uh, paradigm in the post-1989 Polish historiography and public discourse. Finally, the town of 1987-88 uh, by the Wrocław group Luxus, a cutout paper installation which caricatured uh, a trashy outlook of uh, socialist urban spaces. Locate, located vis-a-vis -vis Kwiekulik's work, it resonated not only with its DIY cutout, cutout aesthetics, but also with another work included in the duo's presentation, Kwiekulik's Circle of 1976 which captured photographically poor material qualities of urban spaces the artist moved through on a daily basis. The resonance uh, produced uh, an effect of affinity and showed the work from the 70s and as an important precedent for the younger artists. Polish Chic, organized in 1991, was supposed to perform a bye-bye to Polish, uh, Polish Republic of Poland. And yet, it can be also treated as a revisionary exhibition performative. In the uh, early 1990s, a bye-bye to the 1945-1989 uh, period in Poland meant either cutting it off with a proverbial thick line or, in a more radical fashion, deleg delegitimizing it completely as an era of Soviet occupation and non-sovereignty of Poland. In the latter case, Whatever appeared under socialism should not be counted as belonging to the tradition and essence of Polishness. The show, however, in its selection of works and Sitkowska's text in the catalog, attempted to counter this simple exclusion of the socialist period and to include certain works which conveyed uh, uh, their uh, critical experience into the traditional uh, post-romantic visual canon of Polishness. Uh, an important part of the show was uh, the so-called Sot Room, a sketchy but interesting take on a contextual art display. It featured a TV uh, wall with speeches of Polish Communist Party leaders and Bonarski's flea market installation with poor quality mass-produced uh, uh, objects. It is uh, here, um, uh, it, sorry, it was there, side by side with such artifacts, evocative of political and socio-economic uh, realities, that three works produced or co-produced by Kwiekulik were displayed. One was Fingi, a monument of the Hack culture cult of 1979, an installation with photo documentation of Kwiekulik's potboiler works. Another was a Kwiekulik's uh, work, uh, sorry, another Kwiekulik's work was Art Out of the Nerves uh, of 1975, a primed canvas with a text recounting an autobiographical but also a typical story of everyday life under socialism, an unsuccessful attempt at returning an empty bottle at the shop. It was hung uh, side by side with October 77, 
a collective painting with a Kwiekuli created with their son Maximilian, Teresa Gierzyńska, Edward Dwórnik, and Dorota and Daniel Wnuk for a competition commemorating the 60th, uh, 60th uh, anniversary of the revolution. Even if there was some tongue-in-cheek in this unconventional treatment of the propaganda topic, the jury uh, could not or did not want to notice it, and the work won the third prize. However, in her catalog text, Sitkowska went as far as to claim that the piece was utterly ironic and therefore could be put on the cover of some future book album with Polish anti-socialist art. As such, the painting was confronted with a few examples of works purported to be the court art under socialism, such as Magdalena Abakanowicz's uh, gobli uh, goblin uh, reproduction of the Życie Warszawy newspaper with the then uh, um, uh, Prime Secret Secretary Edward uh, uh, Gierek. Polish chic was, uh, sorry, Polish chic also uh, constructed an unexpected but striking connection as it showed a strong visual similarity of October 77 painting to works by young neo-expressionist painters such as Krzysztof Skarbek. It could also help to perform the task of legitimizing the 1970s art as setting an important precedent to the art of the following decade. Now, judging by mixed reviews of Paul German Russian and mostly critical ones in the case of Polish chic, the exhibitions did not fully perform the task that they had assumed. And yet, they managed to perform a, a promise and a potentiality. It was taken up and effectively fulfilled in 2000 uh, by two other exhibition performatives, the shows Polonia Polonia and Grey in Color 1956-1970, curated by uh, Anda Rotenberg at the uh, Zachenta uh, Gallery. The former celebrated the presence of the iconographic topos of Polonia in the Polish visual arts between mid 19th century and the year 2000. Kwiekulik series of still performances, Banana and Pomegranate of uh, 1986, ironically and critically confronting all the canonical, pathos laden and often bombastic images reproduced time and again in school textbooks came out convincingly as real existential allegories of a set of specific life conditions in Poland. The other exhibition, a cultural life and material history show, which enjoyed huge popularity among the audience, included a partial presentation of Kwiekulik's archive uh, piece um, presentation uh, entitled Autobiographical Aggregate. Uh, the display offered uh, reconstructions of several types of social spaces and, uh, that were uh, typical for uh, People's Republic of uh, Poland in the 60s and presentations of the most important galleries from the period. Placed among them, Kwiekulik's archive proved to have an equal importance to, for example, the famous Foxal Gallery and actively supported the main argument of the show. Namely, that during the grey era of Polish Communist Party Władysław Gomułka, colorful cultural and artistic life developed on the fringes of the official culture. And now the second part, East Central European, uh, European art history on its way to self-emancipation. A prominent part of Kwiekulik's afterlife was connected to the initiatives of Moderna Galleria and its directors Denka Badovinac. It is, of course, difficult to overstate the institution's formative role in the self-emancipation of the field of art history of the region. There were three important steps in this process, which I'm going to discuss now, since all of them involved presenting Kwiekulik's works. These were the exhibitions Body in the East in 1998, Collection Art is 2000 plus in the year 2000, and Interrupted Histories in 2006. Sorry. Uh, a prominent part of Kwiekulik's, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, yeah. uh, Body and the East was organized to expose the lack throughout the East Central Europe of common and comparative account of the uh, region's art history. The show was supposed to form a precondition for the creating uh, uh, of uh, such an account in the future. It was to this end that it brought together works by performance artists 
which largely remained unknown beyond their home countries and made it possible for connections between their art to become more visible. The selection of pieces by 80 artists from the region was made with the help of consult consultants from each country. In the case of Poland, the consultant who proposed to include, among others, the photo documentation of Krzykulik's activities uh, for the head from 1978 was the then doctoral student Agata Jakubowska. Uh, the display at the premises of Moderna Galleria was certainly important. However, in terms of its performative range, duration, and e effectivity, even more important was the exhibition's bilingual Slovene-English catalog. It reached more audiences internationally, and it served, over a period of time, as a necessary reference point for further attempts at developing art history of the region. The catalog uh, featured uh, Badovinat's uh, texts, which, uh, in addressing the problem of the West's cultural he hegemony and artists playing a double game with contradictory East and West identity representations, itself performed a series of double gestures. But Dovinac was focusing on the otherness of East Central European art and yet tried not to exoticize it or folklorize it, so she repeatedly denied any essential difference between performance in East and West in terms of self-aggression or emphasis on politics. She was also against a compartmentalization of the region into distinct uh, state national sections and yet, she also did not succumb to the temptation of identifying with Western universalism, which would entail the erasure of local differences. She asserted that the performing body was not self-sufficient, and its meaning came from its cultural, in institutional, and political context. At the same time, she conceded that this context marking the body is itself something invisible and non signified All of this led to the fact that her textual manifesto for a ra radical contextualism was accompanying the exhibition display, which did not really showcase the context of the works. These contextual differences were enacted, more or less effectively, by texts in each section of the catalog, which still divided the artists according to their home country, but the display rather disclosed visual similarities between presented items, producing the community. As part of the exhibition, Kwiekulik's uh, activities for the head did not stick out from the multitude of depicted acts. Instead, it worked collectively with them to build a representative community of East Central European performing bodies, which were marked by their invisible and non signified contexts with certain degree of crypticness or obscurity. The same work uh, by Kvikulik was included in what has become a permanent extension of the above man mentioned show, and namely in the Art East 2000 Plus Art Collection. The first presentation of the collection took place in the year 2000 in a defunct former military barracks at Metelkova, which had already been assigned to Moderna Galleria as part of its future premises, but were yet to be reconstructed. The uh, decaying uh, material structure of the building, with layers of paint peeling off the walls, acted as a general site-specific and context-specific frame, which might have been read as connecting the collection to the political and military regimes of the past, or to the often poor material and economic conditions of experimental artistic production and distribution in the region. This time, the uh, above-mentioned uh, Kwiekulik's work became part of another interesting visual performative. It was put in relation by means of an identical inframing and close spatial positioning with several other important performances from the 1970s uh, by Sanya Ivekovic, uh, Karel Miller, Jan Mlcoch, uh, Petr Stembera, and Milos Shein. All of this made them into a subgroup and offered them for a comparative reading. As such, the works enacted the logic of the whole collection, whose aim was, once again, to enable comparisons between art from different countries of the region, and in this way help to construct a more general definition of its art. Uh, the event of the show uh, included uh, two uh, elements which were meant to expand its performative effectivity. 
One was the fact that it took place in parallel with the third manifesta uh, in Ljubljana and from the start was designed to be visited by wider international art audiences. The other element was, once again, the catalog. It was published the following year, only in English, on the occasion of the collections traveling to uh, Isenbruck, Austria. Yet it featured uh, photo documentation of the original show. It stressed, time and again, the need for radically contextual approach to the art of the region. Uh, Bodanowicz uh, uh, recalled uh, the critique of the modernist uh, Universal Museum and subscribed to the emerging model of the Global Local Museum as a space for revealing different contexts of art uh, production. The issue was also tackled by, in text by Piotr Piotrowski and Boris Groys. Both scholars agreed on contextualism as a means of revealing the specificity of the art of the region, but they diverged when it came to the kind of frame to talk about the past. Piotrowski reasserted the predominance of political history based on the concept of the totalitarian, while Groys tried to transgress it and pr proposed uh, the framework of socialist modernizations. The former approach uh, uh, has been performed for decades now in East Central uh, uh, European art historiography, but the latter, Groys, remains, especially in terms of uh, a panoramic account of the whole region, uh, just a promise and a potentiality. Uh, ju just consider that to date there has never been an exhibition or a book called Art and Socialist Modernization in East Central Europe after 1945. Should, ever, should, should there ever be one, Kwiekulik would certainly provide it with one of its prominent examples and uh, arguments. And uh, my uh, final case study, the exhibition Interrupted Histories, took place, as I said, in 2006. It featured installation from Kwiekulik's archive prepared by Zofia Kulik, which used the duo's archival materials uh, to form a chronological narrative on the history of experimental art in Poland between the late 1960s and the late 1980s. In the show, there were a few similar practices as the art pool uh, presentation, but it also featured works uh, by contemporary artists uh, which did not have much to do with artistic self-historicization. Badovinat's catalog text was an important part of the exhibition performativity due to the fact that, at the time, it could already widely circulate online. She introduced there the very important concept of artistic self-historicization, which uh, soon, uh, soon gained prominence and sketched a vision of interrupted histories. She turned the lack of a common collective grand narrative of East Central uh, European art into a virtue and a plurality of small, incohesive parallel histories created by self-archiving unofficial artists became a new model she strongly advocated, even for professional art history practices. Kwiekulik's archive, along with that of uh, uh, Arkpool, provided her with decisive exemplary arguments to support her ideas. While the presentations of both uh, archives uh, remained limited to their respective home country histories, it was Irvin's uh, East Art Map which outlined a structure for their possible relationship as it traced actual transnational contacts, connections, and cooperation between artists from different countries of the region. The exhibition itself pursed, uh, pursued in this uh, direction by br bringing together artists from East Central Europe and Middle East, which suggested a possible uh, uh, transnational or transregional of peripheries. Uh, the three discussed shows at Moderna Galleria jointly articulated the three C's of East Central European art history to date, contextualism, comparativism, and connectivism. The tracing of Kwiekulik's art afterlife in these shows and the ones that uh, I was talking about at the beginning, the ones in Poland, may prompt us to ask two questions which I'm putting here in lieu of a conclusion. So what type of context should we use as a general frame framework for art histories of our region and how to showcase such contexts in exhibitions which feature art practices? Thank you very much.